Welcome to Dream Machine, my name is Aaron. My name is Patricia. And today uh, we're going to be looking at uh, Orion in the Dark. So uh, this is the uh, newest movie uh, that's uh, come out from DreamWorks and it's currently exclusively on Netflix. Yeah, so this is the first time in over 20 years that um, a DreamWorks movie was released outside of theatrical releases. So the last time this happened was when Joseph King of Dreams was released exclusively on direct video and they decided that they didn't want to follow the Disney route so they decided to release all of their films in theaters but I guess with the advent on streaming services becoming more popular and a lot more critically acclaimed films are being released there I guess DreamWorks decided that they were going to be teaming up with Micros Animation to do DreamWorks while the rest of the stuff are being done in-house now for those who don't know Micros is a French production company that does various animation projects uh, they did uh, films such as uh, the the Little Prince they did Captain Underpants the first epic movie they did Sponge on the Run, the Paw Patrol movie, and recently they did Mutant Mayhem. So yeah, I guess it's not too much of a surprise that they're starting to branch out with doing other major projects, uh, you know, outside of the usual in-house projects that DreamWorks is doing. So yeah, this is going to be a case in which we're having three DreamWorks movies coming out this year. So the first one is Orion the Dark. Next month is Kung Fu Panda 4. And then the third movie is going to be the other project, which I'm just going to pull up right now if I can find find it really yeah. quick. Well, while you're doing that, I'll just get everyone up to speed on what Orion in the Dark basically is. So, the thing Orion fears the most is the dark. When the embodiments of his worst fears pays a visit, dark whisks Orion away on a roller coaster ride uh, around the world to prove that there's nothing to be afraid of at night. So, uh, that's the premise of this. And so, uh, while I've been doing that, so if you're on what the third project actually is? The Wild um, Robot. The Wild Robot, okay. So, anyway, going back on the Orion in the Dark. So, um, I guess we focus on Orion himself. And, uh, I mean... Right off the bat, I've got to be honest with everybody, like, uh, I can see where they were going with Orion. Orion is afraid of everything, whether it's, like, you know, uh, bullies, snakes, you know, other people laughing at him, and, uh, you know, the dark itself, or, you know, just, uh, you know, basically, he's he's just a scaredy cat, pretty much. He's probably worse than Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, to be honest with you, and uh, I've got to be honest, like, there's a place for these type of characters, and, uh, you know, there is some sense in regards to all of this, but uh, um, I guess maybe what they were going for here is probably, like, you know, maybe a more outrageous version of Orion in all of this, and I'll explain why I think that's in, in you know, later on in the, in the episode, but uh, I've got to be honest, with everybody, regardless of whether it's uh, you know an outrageous uh, uh, um, adaptation of this character or whether it's just you know um, a, a wild story about like you know uh, Orion Rain the Dark, I've got to be honest with everybody, I don't particularly like this protagonist all that much. Yeah, so I think what they were trying to do was that you know how back in the 80s and 90s there used to be like the timid kid that would be like the main protagonist in every single movie. You know, we've had um, a lot of this uh, discussion back in the Roll Doll retrospective in which pretty much every single main character was a timid yet optimistic character. Charlie from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Luke from The Witches, Danny from Danny the Champion of the World, James from James and the Giant Peach. It was pretty much like a typical character that you would see back then. And I guess with Orion, it's no exception where, you know, he's kind of like Chucky from Rugrats or he's Richard Tyler from The Page Master in which he's like this... Or Orlo from uh, the, 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 the Dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you essentially have like these characters that are very timid about everything. They're scared of even the minute things, but their their arc is essentially overcoming their fear so that they can be able to become brave. And that's the main lesson here. And so I take it that that was the direction that they were going for. But this kid takes it to the nth degree. He's afraid of anything you can think of. Bees, bullies, talking to girls. He's afraid of flushing down the toilets and flooding the school. He's afraid of falling out of a skyscraper. He's afraid of being humiliated in front of his peers. He's afraid of everything you can think of. And nobody knows what to do with him. His parents don't know what to do with him. And they, you know, they're just like overwhelmed with all of his fears. And they're trying to do their very best. But they can see that their son is very timid. And he doesn't have any friends. Uh, there's this one girl named Lisa who, you know, they, he, you know, she seems to like him in a way. But he's just too scared to tell her. And there's this bully who's constantly making fun of him, calling him crying Orion. So, yeah, it's not too much of a surprise of character 
characters that follow in these um, movies or TV shows that we grew up with back in the 80s and 90s. The problem is, is that it's been a while since they've had a character like this portrayed in a movie or a TV show. Yeah, and uh, I've got to be honest, like, uh, it's sort of a character that, you know, if done correctly, I think you can probably get some sympathy with, but, uh, yeah, Orion is a very, you know, uh, strange, I think, uh, character in all of this, and uh, I don't think that what they've done with him, I don't think he's necessarily been, like, you know, the best portrayal, I think, of, like, you know, the scaredy cat character, if, I think, if you will. So... I, I, exactly, because, you know, all the characters that we talked about, either with, uh, Rug, you know, with Chucky and Rugrats, or with any of the characters in the Roald Dahl retrospective, they at least had a reason on why they were scared. Like, for example, Chucky from the Rugrats, he's a two-year-old baby. The world is scary. He doesn't know anything about a lot of things. It makes a lot of sense. And then when All Grown Up came about, he's scared... Yes, but he's scared of, like, talking to girls and interacting with people. I mean, you know, like, normal teenager fears. And then you have, like, characters like um, Charlie from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. He's a timid kid because he's from a poor upbringing. Um, Luke from The Witches. His parents were dead in a car accident, and he got transformed into a mouse. Danny but Orion basically has, you know, not much in regards to, like, any type of trauma or anything like that. He seems to be like well-adjusted. Yeah, he, yeah he has good parents. He's in a nice school, and, uh, you know, he's not from a bad upbringing. I mean, uh, sure, we go through bullies. I, I mean, that's true. You know, bullies are pretty tra traumatizing, but nothing, like, severe, like, compared to other adaptations of, you know, other characters based off of adaptation that we've discussed about that justifiably have these characters go through, like, major timid issues. You know, in the previous episode of uh, Dream Machine, we actually talked about, you know, where uh, trolls uh, band together, and uh, we talked about how, how, like, you know, we didn't like the villains of that movie because, you know, uh, they came from, like, pretty much well-adjusted families and uh, basically just wanted more. And uh, i got to be honest, like, you know, um, uh, Orion is not exactly the same thing, but the kind of, like, the, you know, the, the background, the backstory of this character is somewhat similar. Like, you know, he comes from, like, you know, a well, a very well-adjusted family. He, you know, his school seems to be okay. I mean, obviously, bullies, you know, exist in this world. I mean, I'm totally up for accepting that. So, I mean, Orion doesn't really have, like, you know, a place to like, where he got his fit from like you know what made him so scared effectively like is it because he overthinks things or is it because like he you know well like you know well i would like to know like you know the, the one thing uh, i would be interested in with this character is that we delve a bit further and more so like about why why what is does everything make him scared and we don't really get a really solid answer to that. It seems to be more like, you know, oh, well, he's not really experienced, you know, the, the things that he's afraid of or confronted the things that he's afraid of. So yeah. that's where Dark comes in. Yeah. And, and so um, I like Dark. You know, yeah. I think he's a very good a good side character, I think, in this. And uh, so um, he sort of reminds me of the genie in Aladdin in a little bit, really. But he doesn't do, like, do two portrayals. Like, like yeah, he's very toned down, I think, uh, in that. So I think he's a very good companion, I think, uh, for, you know, Orion. And uh, so, um, you know, Dark doesn't really take his, uh, I mean, he, he hears about, you know, Orion's fear of the dark, you know, constantly, and uh, so does his other, like, you know, work colleagues that, you know, that help him you know, with the dark as well, and we get introduced them later on into the movie, but, uh, uh, so, uh, Dark, I think, is, you know, he's a very fun character, he also feels like he's, you know, massively misunderstood in the world, and so, um, he believes that, you know, everyone is, like, you know, massively afraid of him, and uh, very irrationally so, and so you get to see that kind of, like, you know, uh, uh, see how he goes through the motions of that, and, uh, you know, he's hoping that he can prove to Orion that, you know, if he, he can be, be say, say that he's not afraid of him anymore, then obviously why should anyone else be afraid of him? And yeah. uh, so uh, that gets tried and tested throughout, throughout the movie. So um, I like Dark in this in this movie. I think he's a very good you know side character in this. I do agree. Yeah, I really like the fact that Dark was able to make his way to Orion saying, I've been hearing you scream every single night. You are night enemy number one. And the only way that I can be able to have you stop being afraid of everything is if you come with me and spend 24 hours with me seeing what I do and meet up with my colleagues and see what they do and maybe you won't be so scared. And of course, Orion is saying, no, he's hiding under the covers and he doesn't want to be a part of this. And then Dark basically just like brings him up anyway. And so he tries to show him everything. It's like, you know, I'm the one who brings night to everything. And, you well, know, the thing, like, you know, uh, Orion's reaction to like all the characters in this is not necessarily a thing of fear. It's more like, uh, he's more like, he like, doesn't understand why they're there. Like, you know, it's just like, he's kind of like pointing things out and questioning everything. Like, yeah. It's just, so it's, uh, let's go through all the, um, the companions. So we yeah. have sleep, insomnia, 
quiet, unexplained noises and street, uh, sweet dreams. So these are all the companions that is alongside of dark as, you know, nighttime approaches. So sleep basically goes to every single person and does some really weird stuff to make them fall asleep, whether it's hitting with a hammer or chloroform or um, anything of the sort. And then she would just kiss them goodnight. And, you know, he's basically like really frightened. It's like, oh my gosh, you're doing these extreme things to get people to fall asleep. And then with insomnia... But it's magic. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's magical sleep. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, and on top of that, like, you know, I think, you know, Orion, I think, uh, you know, uh, doesn't really have, you know, an uh, argument. Uh, it's like, who is he to, like, you know, turn around and say he's asleep? Like, you know, how on earth he should do his job? Yeah, like, especially since sleep has been doing it for thousands of years. Exactly. Orion kind of, like, reminds me of, like, an internet commenter. That's what he kind of reminds me of, is he goes around all these characters and, like, calls them out on, like, on the, on the stuff that they do. It's kind of like... Dude, no. It's like, you know, uh, you don't have any experience of, like, putting people to sleep or making noises in the dark and things like that. Why all of a sudden is, like, you know, your... Why does your opinion count in all of this? What expertise do you have to grab from besides being, like, you know, a kid? And that's like, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, out of, it's kind of like, he, Ryan reminds me, like, you know, he says, like, he's, you know, um, he, he expects to gain sympathy by saying, well, I don't really want to, you know, call things out during the class because I'm worried that people are going to react to me. I mean, I've got to be honest with you, the way that he's reacting with, like, all the uh, the elements, like, you know, within the dark, I mean, I, I kind of don't blame anybody for, like, laughing at him or, like, you know, uh, you know treating him, you know, treat terribly. He calls out people. That rubbed me the wrong way in regards to, you Yeah, know, like, like, you're supposed to be, like, saying, oh, but Orion is trying trying to help you guys he's trying to clear out some things and say like maybe there's a different way to do it but no when he goes over to insomnia and sees insomnia like whisper things into people's ears keeping them up at night he's like saying why are you doing that they you know leave them alone or with quiet you know sucking up all of the noises and then he's like overwhelmed and saying it's too quiet or for unexplained noises when you know she's making noises with trash cans and he's like saying leave these people alone why are you doing this and then for sweet dreams you know, there's a woman who has anxiety of two things. Uh, she wants to present um, a presentation to her job and she wants to, um, you know, decide on whether that she wants her daughter um, that she brought a puppy home or a kitten home saying like, oh, can we keep it? And so, you know, you have sweet dreams coming in doing something really nice. Like you're saying, congratulations, you got the job. And, you know, the mother, uh, you know, the, uh, the daughter coming out with the, the the pet saying, can we keep it? And then, you know, she says, you're the best mommy in the world. It's like, that is very sweet. And, and then Ryan comes in and ruins the whole thing. Yeah, but he comes in and ruins the whole thing with his fears. With the whole, oh, um, you know, what happens if, um, you know, there's a dentist and then there's an angry um, cucumber and then his bully comes in. And here's the thing, this is not Orion dreaming it. This is another person dreaming about not only the promotion and not only the daughter wanting the pet and she saying yes, but she is also dreaming of the dentist, the evil cucumber, and the bully that Orion is coming up with and ruining her dream and then I would imagine you would wake up being very confused yeah like confused it's like how I mean, they're supposed to treat it like this is supposed to be really serious it's like no I'm not feeling tension from this I'm just feeling confused it's like this is the woman dreaming this not Orion well how are we so this is the thing like and then once you know um, we get to sort of like a really cringeworthy scene where you know where Orion is uh, like as you know having to stand up in front of everybody and apologize for like you're saying how you know uh, they you know they are irrelevant or like you know without date so we get introduced to daytime as well and uh, he's all, he's like kind of reminds me of Johnny Bravo in a way yeah know? yeah you you know how when you're a kid and you're like drawing the sky with the sun in it and sometimes you put like sunglasses on him it's yeah, like that it's like that and so um, we get introduced to that and uh, you know obviously Orion likes the daytime because like of all the colors and everything like that yeah it and makes so you feel then, safe it makes you feel yeah. warm I basically just like you know basically you know once again uh, call out are you know present you know characters in all of this and uh, I gotta be honest this is like a really you know Orion's also lose sympathy very quickly but then you know even before we get to that we then realize that uh, Orion in the dark for some strange reason decides to borrow from boss baby and what I mean by that is that uh, we then get like a flashback of sorry basically you say a flash forward uh, of you know Orion telling this story an older Orion telling this story to his daughter now here's the thing Unlike Boss Baby, where we knew this was the case from the very beginning, this comes out oh, right, right out of saying, nowhere. Yeah. 
But it's like, you know, when you're doing boss baby formula, I mean, like, that rubs you the wrong way already. Like, it's just, it's, uh, you know, we, we don't like boss baby by any stretch of the imagination. Like, you know, we just came, you know, also, uh, whether boss baby's worse than trolls, I mean, that's the debate for another time. But, uh, I mean, yeah, this, this doesn't, no. I mean, unfortunately, this, this sort of makes sense from a state, it's, uh, in a way that's to excuse uh, Ryan basically being, like, you know, a, a, a caricature, I guess you could say, you know, uh, of, you know, his younger self, I guess you could say, but no. Nah, I just don't think it's lazy writing, you know, in a way, just to say, oh, we can just explain it away because, like, you know, it's a, it's a, 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 a substantiated story of, like, you know, um, uh, the imagination of, like, his, you know, Orion's daughter and, like, him and, like, it's just... Yeah, now, now, here's the thing. This didn't work for Boss Baby. I don't know why it would work for this. Yeah, now, some people were actually comparing this to The Princess Bride, but the difference is, is that The Princess Bride was... It's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yes, it is a good movie, but here's the thing. It was a fairy tale that was told to... To, you know, from a grandfather to a grandson, and it had nothing to do with himself. It was about a princess who met up with this really rebellious guy, and she fell in love with him. So it had nothing to do with the grandfather when he was a young guy. It was just a story that he told to his grandson, and it was fun. And it made a lot of sense where you jump in between the grandfather and the grandson, and then the storyline, and then the grandfather again, and then the grandson saying, oh, I don't like this part, I, I hate the kissing, I want the action stuff. It made sense. You know what? Even Boss Baby kind of makes sense because, again, it's just the man telling his daughters the story about when he was a kid and he found out he was going to have a baby brother. This whole thing about Orion telling the story to his daughter that, you know, of what ha- quote unquote happened when he was a kid, that he met up with Dark just so that he can be able to conquer his fears, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like, I'm sure there's another kid who's probably, like, you know, walking around saying, you know, my dad's off his meds again. Oh, jeez. Okay, let's continue. So I mean, is this going to be, is this going to be, that now it's like, is every DreamWorks film basically going to have, like, you know, uh, dads who are basically just, like, you know, completely off their rockers and, like, you know, telling, like, you know, these crazy stories to, like, they, they're their offspring? Uh, I mean, here's the thing. I know what he was trying to do in this case because his daughter is afraid of the dark. And so he wants to tell her this story so that she can be able to feel better about the dark. So basically, there's possibility that this story never happened, and it's basically just something that he's coming up with, basically just to, you know, uh, make sure his daughter isn't afraid of the dark. I don't know. That's the thing. I really don't know. I mean, it it makes it look like it's a story, but at the same time, there's some tiny elements that made it look like it could have happened. I I mean, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but yeah, it's, isn't it confusing? It's yeah, really right. confusing. I don't really know if this actually happened or if this is a story that he kind of like made some bits and pieces up just to tell his uh, daughter that there's. There's nothing to be afraid of for the dark. I, I legitimately don't know. Yeah, it's like you know, it's just it's, it's like Inception, isn't it? Like, yeah, you know, I mean, at least with real. at least with Boss Baby, the events of that actually happened. This case, unfortunately, yes, un- <laughs> unfortunately. But in this case, did Orion really meet up with Dark? If because if that's the case, then some of the events that we saw like later on in the story, they couldn't have happened. Well, okay, let's let's continue, shall we? So. Yeah, this is the part of the movie where I was like, I was really close to being just fed up with him, where he basically tells, you know, the companion saying about like, you know, dark is dangerous and dark is bad. And, you know, everything about light is so much better. There's more colors. It makes you feel safe. It makes you feel happy. And, you know, your kind of your your stuff could be benefited so much better if you didn't even follow up with Dark. And, you know, Dark is the worst thing ever. Oh, by the way, like after he does all of that and, you know, uh, Dark confronts him over it, he does like the whole like, you know, get up on a get up on a pedestal and does the fake like the politician's fake apology uh, whole thing. And it's about as cringe worthy as you can probably this imagine. This scene it is. is absolutely awful. The fact that he quote unquote apologizes and tries to explain to the other companions that, oh, um, no, but, but Dark is a good thing. And then he tries to like correct himself, saying like, you know, you, there's, you know, like the grass is always green on the other side. And then Insomnia said, but we can't see green because it's dark. And you know and- something, I just like if uh, I, if if there was ever a scene, if you know, if I was ever in this movie and the bully is willing to give like Orion the swirly, I would happily pull the flush. I, seriously, like you know what? There's no redeeming in, in about two of the three acts. There's no redeeming qualities to this protagonist. I- I- isn't. I, I don't like this character at all. Isn't, like, uh, dare I say, it's worse than Orlo. 
I would think. At least Orlo probably wouldn't be, you know, uh, this, you know, uh, judging, at least, you know, and also when he made the, you know, uh, the campaign with the caveman, you know, uh, you know, the cave boy, I guess you could say. I mean, uh, at least you could say Orlo was, like, you know, aware of, like, all the dangers around him and, like, uh, you know, eventually he would go on to confront them. Okay, in the context of Arlo and the Good Dinosaur, that he, the reason why he was such a timid character was because he was pretty much overshadowed by his older siblings. Yeah. Like, his older... And also he saw his dad die in front of him as well. That and, too, yes. Yeah, I mean, there's trauma, there is, like, you know... Uh, Inadequacy. Family, uh, and family hierarchy as well, yeah, there's things with that that's going on as well. There's... Ex- you know, there is, str- you know, character structure with, you know, Arlo in The Good Dinosaur, and Dan- The Good Dinosaur was not necessarily a good movie, but, I mean, the, the i got to be honest with you, the protagonist in the, in the Good Dinosaur, I would say, is probably miles better than what we're getting with, uh, you know, Orion right now in this movie. Yeah, because he almost screws things up. When he t- when he tries to convince the other, um, pr- uh, the other c- companions, saying like, hey, you know, Dark is actually a good thing, they flat out quit. I mean, well, that's because, like, you know, again, like, he's just, like, a half, like, a half-hearted apology, and he even still throws the dark under the bus, even regardless of that. Like, you know, that speech is cringe, and so they all just sit there waiting for daytime to come along, and uh, then daytime does come along, and, uh, you know, dark, eventually just himself, also kind of just stays there and just, you know, uh, accepts things of the light and just disappears. Yeah. And, you know, at, at that point, I feel so bad for dark. I really do. I like feel it. so bad for him because this is a guy who was willing to take this kid who clearly hates him to show him that there was nothing to be afraid of. You know what? This movie should have just been called Dark. Like, you know, like, it made Dark the main character. You know, uh, screw Orion, as far as I'm concerned. Like, he should have been, like, the, the main character in all this. He's fun. He is, uh, you know, he is a bit of a goof as well. Like, he has his friends who are the companions. Like, you know, he's obviously more sociable. You know, uh, he's uh, obviously got, you know, a thing where, like, he's uh, he, he hates the fact that most of the people are afraid of him. So he's got this opportunity to take someone like Orion and take him in for 24 hours and say, hey, hey, I can, you know, uh, make this kid, if I can make this kid believe that, you know, Dark is a good thing, I can make any kid believe that, you know, Dark is a good thing. And he's like, that's his obsession. And then his character evolution can be say, well, okay, well, some people can be, uh, will, will be afraid of me, for, you know, out of ra- irrationality and that, but uh, eventually, like, you know, I will accept my place in the world because, you know, uh, I provide a really good function, and it's about, you know, uh, rather the, the belief in myself to do my own things rather than getting the benefits of others. That's a great main protagonist for this. It didn't need to be Orion. No, I'm sorry. Orion needed, could have easily just been like you know, the the side character, maybe even the tweener, who basically ends up kind of like doing like villainous things, but then realizes the error of his ways and then turns around and does like that. We'll totally accept that. I hate the fact that we started with Orion in this movie. I think it just like, leaves a bad taste in my mouth. All right, so let's continue on, shall we? So death essentially gets overtaken by light, and so death. <laughs> you mean dark? Dark. Well, yeah. he's dead. Okay, Dark is dead. Yeah, I mean, if if if, if uh, you know, Defner came around and we wrote his name in it, I would okay, do that too. okay, fine. So Dark was basically just absorbed by the sunlight, and now Dark is no more, mm-hmm. and now everybody is suffering. Everybody is hot. Everybody is can't sleep. No, they can't sleep. This is they- like the Fairly Odd Parents episode where, like, you know, where everyone was, everyone was like, you know, there's no more dead bedtime anymore, so everyone was like staying awake like 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I remember that, yeah. yeah. And everybody was, it's it's the same reaction. Everybody hated each other. They were arguing. There was car accidents. There was just absolute chaos. So yeah, this is what happens when there's no dark. There's no nighttime. You can't sleep. You get cranky, you get yeah. irritated, you get uh, overwhelmed. And Lice is actually hated now. Like, you know, everyone's saying, oh, why, you know, Lice is kind of sitting around, like, you know, everyone's kind of complaining at him. Like, why are they people hating me so much? Yeah, like exactly. It, yeah. It's like, here's the thing. Like, Light was not being, like, a m- complete jerk to Dark. I mean, I can understand that Light is more popular, sure, because, you know, a lot of good things come from sunlight. But, you know, he wasn't, like, completely cocky saying, I'm better than you, you know, get Dare away. Dare I say, Orion's probably more of a villain than Light is in this movie. Oh, my God. You you know you've done something wrong when the main protagonist is the villain. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, you know, except that in Mega... Oh, Mega Man isn't really actually a villain, is he? He's like, I mean, well. Mega Man... I mean, he, he, yeah, he is like a super villain, I guess you could say. But you know, it's like it's uh, you can sort of see how he kind of turned around, I guess. You, yeah, yeah, you know, he's, it, yeah. Him and um, Wrecked Ralph are great yeah. examples of villains that kind of end up being the hero in the end. Yeah, it's like you know, uh, you you know, you are a bad guy, but not exactly a bad guy, as as you know, as Zangief said. As, as, as in in Wreck It Ralph, and you can do these characters well, uh, but, but not yeah, so much. Yeah, but this is a case in which the protagonist is much more of a villain than the actual villain. Yeah. 
he so, pretty much just screws it up for everybody. The, or I, or maybe he didn't because there's a part of the story like around the time in which he's telling his daughter that you know dark was essentially taken by light and then his daughter asks him what happens next and then he says I don't know. That's where the story ends for me. And I'm like what? Yeah. Like, uh, and apparently then it's his daughter who has to come to basically save the story, if you will. Like, you know, she writes herself into the story. All what? Right. This is fan fiction levels of bad. Uh, and so she comes in and uh, basically helps to try and get Dark back. And one of the best ideas basically is to take, you know, uh, uh, Sweet Dreams and, uh, you know, go into uh, the, the into Orion's mind and then, you know, bring uh, Dark back by, you know, that sense. Yeah, I, I, uh, thought, which, that was, I thought this was a really interesting idea. But then they bring in this, like, this whole black hole thing, which is kind of like, uh, what, what, what's that? I like, mean, they there, never it, explain that. I mean, yeah, like, it happened earlier in the movie when they were inside of the mind of the woman who was having the dream about the promotion and her daughter have, uh, wanting a pet. Like, there's this whole, like, black hole thing. I don't, is this supposed to be Nightmare? I don't understand. Yeah, I don't get what they were trying to go here. It's like, it's like oh, if he falls into this hole, he dies. It's so, like, so it's like, what is this, Nightmare on Elm Street? Uh, no idea. It's like, you know. You what, know, like, when a character is falling asleep and they're dreaming and when they die in the dream they die in real yeah. life anyway that whole thing's relevant because as you know you know where they all come in to save the day and you know where yeah. they all escape the you know orion's yeah mind yeah but the- but here's the thing like again uh you know before we go into the whole like his daughter gets into the story to help out orion you know we see you know them walking in the park and it's dark and then they both didn't want to go in there it's like wait a minute is Orion still afraid of the dark? I thought, it, you know, I thought that maybe at this point in the story, he would have been like... To be fair, though, it would be kind of a smart thing. I mean, I guess they're currently, they live in Manhattan, I think. They the do moment, live in Manhattan, Which yes. is like, I mean, like, the suburbs are actually quite close to, like, you know, you know, you know Manhattan. Yes, you know, like, yes, it is. Manhattan, they? Okay, yeah. so they could just walk into Manhattan if they wanted to and then go to, like, Central Park. Yes. I mean, oh, all right, then. I didn't realize that. Yeah, in Manhattan. Yeah, man- man- that's where uh, Central Park is. It's in Manhattan. Oh, all right, then. That's fine. So, uh, I mean, so it looks like they're, at, you know, in Manhattan looking like they're walk in Central Park because to be honest with you like you know uh, during the evening like you know in a very dark you know it's place, pretty like, scary you, well not scary like pretty dangerous as well like you know you don't know what on earth can be in there yeah like, I mean the, I thought that New York City in Central Park yeah huh? there, I thought that uh, Orion was going to hold his daughter's hand and saying that there's nothing to be afraid of or maybe yeah. he would have told a part of the story that you know he learned a lesson from maybe dark they, maybe they realized that maybe that Don Bluth troll is probably still in there somewhere. <laughs> maybe, like, maybe that, that's what they were trying to avoid you know like uh, you know so, oh my uh, god yeah and if no one knows what I'm referring to, it's a troll in Central Park. Of course it is. Yeah, anyway, so um, that happens. Then they go back to the story. And so, I mean, if, if you want a short term of it, basically, it's like they save the day and then they realize, oh, how are we going to get, you know, because um, apparently, you know, the daughter transported herself like 20 years into the past to like, you know, do that. And then they're wondering how they're going to get it back home. And then, you know, all of a sudden it's kind of like, uh, you know, this, you know, was it named Tim? I think his name is like Tico. the t- Tico, the time traveler, like, you know, character that yes. randomly appears, never referred to in the movie until now. And then she, and then all of a sudden, like, there's just like these, like, time creatures that apparently have been. So apparently the time splitters now is finally crossing over with the, uh, uh, with the this DreamWorks universe, apparently. It's yeah. Just, uh, it's just, and then we, and then yeah. we, and then we learn that Tico is actually the son of the daughter of Orion. So she's telling the story of her father's experience to her own son. So it is. I'm sorry, which part of the story is this from? Is it Orion telling the story to his daughter, or is it the daughter telling the story to her son? I'm confused, that's all I can say. So, apparently, um, it's going to be... um, Yeah, so this is the grandson now of uh, Orion. So, apparently, he's finished the story off, from what I understand, and now, you know, uh, the... The grandparents now are effectively, you know, looking after him for the time, and uh, I just, uh, I, I'm so confused. I'm, uh, I'm lost. I, I'm lost. You know. Yeah, and, and the whole thing about like, oh, light has taken over. Well, I mean, if we, if, if, if he, if Orion told his daughter, I don't know how the story ends at this point. We can assume that it didn't happen because if that were the case, that you know, dark never came back, then it would still be like bright light, or they would be dead because it, you know, bright light with that. That all the time it would be overwhelming the oceans would dry up plant life would be dried up as it is i mean yeah that that wouldn't make any sense my head hurts yeah 
So, um, yeah, I mean, the only thing, uh, the that... one thing I'm just really shocked about, I was only reading about this before we went to, uh, to, uh, to record this podcast. This is certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh. Well, I mean, here's the thing. The story is all over the place and some of the characters suck, but I have to say the way that they presented the story is actually really ambitious. Yeah, I, I guess you could say that, but uh, at the same time, it needed another rewrite. It needed, like, you know, some more structuring. It needed a bit more of an idea. It shouldn't have, like, surprised people as it was all going along. Like, you know, these weren't pleasant surprises. They were like, huh? Yeah, like, now, I mean, here's the, th- here's the reason why it feels very jumbled and confused. The person who wrote the screenplay is Charlie Kaufman. You may know him for movies such as Being John Malkovich and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind and Amy Locia, which are movies that are really confusing and structured weirdly and go all over the place. Because that's what you want in a family entertainment movie, don't yeah, this, you? This, this, yeah. is, this is his first family entertainment film. He yeah. does a lot. He did a lot of uh, movies and for you can, adults. And it shows. It, it really shows. Like, you know, Being John Malkovich is about a guy who enters into John Malkovich's mind and sees you know through his perspective internal sunshine of the spotless mind is about two people who go through a really bad uh, part in their relationship and they want to erase the memories of their entire love life and then they just feel empty and alone and amelisa is about a guy who sees the same person in every single face with the exception of one person and he's trying to figure out why. This guy's writing is supposed to be a lot of metaphors but at the same time presented in very interesting ways. But that's mean, who are you telling the story to? That's the thing. Like, you know, where this is supposed to be like a you know, family entertainment movie and uh, you are basically telling like what effectively is like, you know, a story for, you know, like more of an adult audience in this regard. And uh, I think, you know, that's where Orion and the Dog loses for focus in my opinion i mean i gotta be honest with you i mean like I, i'm seeing now like it is like number six and like you know in uh, in netflix streaming at the minute so like it is being searched and uh, people are watching it and uh, i'm guessing some people are getting enjoy- a lot of people are getting enjoyment out yeah, of it I, I think but that- i mean i think uh, you know in regards to like you know look at all the dreamworks library that we have like this i mean it's it's good that they're being ambitious and like you know taking on a movie like this but uh, i think they need to kind of like take a step back a little bit of a second and say i think we may need to do something with the story that kind of help the audience along here and i'm not saying that the audience is stupid in any particular way and I'm, I'm not saying that at all but i think you have to i mean we are we, you and i uh, i guess you could say are dreamworks fans and uh, you know we do enjoy dreamworks movies we enjoy kung fu panda we enjoy madagascar we enjoy you know uh, very various other you know uh, uh, movie franchises i think with orion and the dark i think uh, if they are looking to basically take this to the next level i mean uh, i mean a lot of people i guarantee you'll probably look at this movie and probably say yeah they're basically trying to like do the boss baby formula and uh, trying to get that to work you know it's the, Not- it's, the, it's the crazy story that basically kind of like goes but you know i know what you're saying because uh, you've already laid out like what these what he's type of movies basically you know this guy does but i mean unfortunately there's something that kind of glares out that kind of looks similar to it unfortunately it's boss baby you know? i mean i can see where you're coming from at that point but i mean here's the thing like You know, for people who focus on a lot of weird auteur films for adults, trying to transition that to kids and make it work, it's going to be really difficult. I was going to say, I mean, like, what's DreamWorks going to do next? I mean, like, Quentin Tarantino, like, you know, you you get Samuel L. Jackson and, like, you know, do, like, a cartoon version of him getting, like, a BJ from, like, you know, another guy on screen. It's like, you know, there there, there, there needs to be, like, you know, some creative control here for, like, an understanding of what the audience is for DreamWorks. Yeah, and here's the thing. Charlie Kaufman does really interesting movies. I really like some of the messages that he comes across with some of his films they can be told kind of strange yes and not very linear but at least you know what he was trying to get across in this case with orion in the dark i understand what he was trying to do i completely get the fact that he was trying to tell a story about a person who is constantly afraid and in overcoming his fears that there are some things that we see that could be perceived as scary being afraid of the dark is one of the most common fears for a child and the fact that you would see that hey there's nothing to be afraid of with the dark because dark brings in a lot of good things it brings in nighttime some animals come in at night some plant life comes in at night you can be able to see fireworks you you can see movies outside you can be able to uh, enjoy a nice warm fire surrounded by family and friends and you know what there's actually there's another character that uh, you and I recently talked about on Aaron and Patricia and uh, who recently went like you know through you know uh, legitimate reasons to be scared and do you know who that was who's that Uh, Lunetta Lafayette in Moon Girl 
Stone Devil Dinosaur. Yeah. Now, she has a right to be terrified because she went through, like, you know, a, 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 an experience that nearly took away her, her mortality. Yeah. So, now, I mean, we're like, not going to get into spoilers for that. Go listen yeah. to Aaron. Okay, we're going to get into spoilers for it. But, uh, I mean, um, that, that the, the, I mean, here's the thing, like, you know, there has been, there's this type of character, if, like, if this person went through, like, you know, a very, or, I, I was expecting throughout the movie that through the Orion, we were going to learn that he went through, like, a, a very traumatic experience, and that's the reason why he's afraid of everything. I really thought maybe we we're going to get, like, you know, the parents are abusive, or, like, you know, we're going to go for, like, oh, well, you know, this happened to him at a very young age, and that's what set him on the course, like, being afraid of everything. I was waiting for that moment, and it oh, never arrived. Or it could have been that he was a very young child. Like, you know, young, like we said, Chucky from Rugrats. Like, he's, he's a in two- middle school, isn't he? Yeah, he's in middle school. Like, How if old he, is he then even in middle school? Like, he was, he's 11 years old. 11 years old. I mean, like, you know, between 5 and 6, I probably imagine something could have happened to him. Yeah, sure. And then like that a, would have set him off for the next couple of years. Yeah, like, if he was, like, maybe, like, a, you know, 5 to 6-year-old, and he doesn't know about how the world works, and he's just seen things that he doesn't understand about. So, things you don't understand can be perceived as scary. And once you learn about it, it doesn't become scary anymore. I thought that was going to be the lesson. Yeah. And it, they, they kind of try to do that that but the execution of it it falls flat i know i know we've been shitting on this movie for almost 30 minutes so i guess we can talk about some positives that we actually liked about this movie so okay I said before, I think that the way that they were trying to tell this story is actually pretty ambitious because DreamWorks films tend to be very comedic. They tend to be a little bit all over the place. And let's be honest, I mean, there are some DreamWorks movies that you can clearly can tell that they were geared towards kids. I think that they were trying to tell a much more mature story, that it's trying to bring in some really interesting things that you wouldn't expect to see in a DreamWorks film. You can see it probably in a Leica film. You can even see this in a Pixar film, but DreamWorks, absolutely not. They are always about the comedy. So the fact that they were able to try to tell a story like this, you know what? I give major kudos for that. Another thing that I really do enjoy, the animation is really good. Yeah, I will say the animation is good. No, the animation is great. Fantastic. I love the blending between the 2D and the 3D animation. It, it reminds me of, like, Diary of a Wimpy Kid or even the, the Peanuts movie in which it tries to do, like, the little drawings of the 2D mixed with the 3D. And the colors are really, really great. And the designs are really, really nice, too. I really do enjoy the animation. The animation on this is fantastic. Yeah, and, uh, and I think that's, uh, you know, I like, you know, the, uh, the companions in this as well, like, you know they're well designed yeah, as well and, exactly uh, not only have like they got the designs down they also got the way that they sound down as well and, like, yeah you know, like they... Angela Bassett as Sweet Dreams fantastic casting exactly yeah I think that was good so... I mean even Jacob Tremblay who we saw in recent films I mean he was um, you know doing uh, he was Luca and he was in Room and various other films I mean you know he does a great voice as Orion it's just a shame that they gave him really bad material to work with yeah unfortunately and Colin Hanks he does a great job as playing as older Orion so so, yeah, he does a really great job, too. I mean, all the cast is fantastic. It's just that the story sucks, and yeah. the, some of the characters suck. It's just like, that's what holds it back. And, uh, you know, it just needed, it needed everyone, like, all the writers kind of like, to be brought back into the room and say, look, I think we need to give this another look. And, like, how many, by the way, how many times have we said that in modern DreamWorks, and even modern Pixar films? Like, you know, the story just isn't, isn't up to scratch. Like, uh, it's just, it's, uh, you know, it's infuriating now. I really do think that, you know, there needs to be less focus on, like, you know, making the movie bigger or making the movie more colourful or making the movie in four, you know, looking good if it was in 8K or something like that. I think all the visual, the visuals are fine. Like, you know, let's concentrate on the story. You know, like, uh, let's, uh, you know, really give this a good one, you know, a good once, twice, three times, you know, even four times, you know, over and, you know, uh, make sure that we've got every, everything in straight and uh, that, I think that's what I think is be happening here I think people uh, it may, this, may, this might be a bit of unfair criticism and I'll happily take you know uh, take the comments for it if uh, people want to say this but uh, I just think that there needs to be you know um, more focus I think on what the purpose of our characters are what sort of journey that our characters are going to go through what are the problems that you know they're going to face up with and how are they going to face them and also give explanations for back things like you know like uh, you know again I go back with the Stan Lee 
idea from Marvel. Now, I know everyone's sick of Marvel movies right now, but I mean, there's the, the one thing that they, that Marvel movies do very well is that they at least explain the backstory of their characters well. And, you know, uh, the villains of, Mo- of these all had to be scientists because how on earth did they come up with this stuff? Or, as well, yeah, they're, say. E- they're either scientists or they're magicians. magicians. Yeah, exactly. Or they're supernatural beings that yeah. just happen to come into way. So, like, you know, the, you know I, the one thing I, I just think that we don't do very well anymore now in modern movie store, in movie selling, which I mean, you know, used to be done actually quite well in the 2000s and in the 2010s, is that, uh, you know, that when a, a villain came along or a protagonist came along and they had some kind of problem, there was an explanation behind it. There's no explanation behind Orion no. whatsoever. No. Yeah, there isn't. And it's infuriating, and I wish it would stop. Yeah. So. I think Charlie Kaufman, the next time that he tries to do a family-friendly film, that I think he needs to, like... Um, you know, take the if you want to take the metaphors and if you want to take, um, you know, the the kind of like the non-linear storytelling, try to take it down a notch. That way, it can be comprehensible for a kid to understand. You know what they should have done? They should have like you know had Orion at like five or six years old. He got lost in the dark one day and then went through like the whole Snow White montage. You know when she like you know she goes into the into the into the woods and you know, there's all these scary things around the woods and everything like that. Like you know that's the reason why you know she's so terrified. You know like uh, you know there's even more explanation for like you know. The very first animated movie, Snow White, for Snow White, than there is for Orion, which, you know, is like a hundred and something years later, you know? It's just, it's, uh, so, um, you know, they should have done that kind of sequence with Orion. They should have put him through, like, you know, six or seven years old, he got lost in the dark one night, and, you know, he went through all these traumatic experiences, and then his parents found him, and then he's never been the same since. Or now, it, it could have been a, or maybe the dark is the only thing he's afraid of, as opposed to all the other fears. Well, well that's how you explain all the other fears, because, like, he's been made afraid of like so many other things like he's been overwhelmed with fear so therefore everything is scary like that should have been the explanation for Orion but they didn't tell it no and they should have told it right you know like you know it's just it's uh yeah so uh I mean we have got what we've got yeah so, so uh, as of right now it is number six in the most streamed uh, movie on Netflix I'm surprised that it is a Netflix exclusive because when it comes to DreamWorks films they usually release on Peacock yeah, so, well, uh, I mean, who knows, maybe the ink's a deal with Netflix to, like, produce a bunch of DreamWorks movies, and therefore this is going to be the first one, and there's going to be more other ones that are going to be coming along the way. Also, like, you know, uh, these are movies that are being taken, like, you know, with other studios, and not exactly entirely with DreamWorks. I guess so. that's true, yeah, so I guess yeah. this is a Micros animation thing. I guess maybe, you know, DreamWorks are just testing the water with, like, different production companies, and saying, huh, who could produce our next major flick? That you is know? true, I mean, they have done that in uh, the Kung Fu Panda movies, in which some of the stuff was outsourced to China, mm. and even with, um abominable if you remember that that was also a chinese production as well yeah so um anyway i think we'll probably begin with scoring this movie i guess all right Um, so yeah so um i mean here's the thing about this i mean like uh, there are some likable characters dark's a likable character and you know some of the bits of the story do make sense unfortunately the overarching story unfortunately needed work and it just wasn't done the music is good in it the um you know the um graphics in in this movie is also very good you know the way that they designed the characters i think is also fantastic as well and uh, they did a really good job with this but unfortunately like you know our main character and the whole you know uh, main story that goes on unfortunately uh, you know when uh, you know, Orion ends up being unlikable basically for the first two acts and only kind of redeems himself basically in the third act unfortunately uh, you know that's the problem here and uh, if I had to give it even a bit of leeway I'd probably say 6.5 out of 10 Okay, seven, because, damn it, I really like what they were trying to do here. I really There's like- There's something here, but it needs more. Yes, I really like the fact that they were trying to do a much more different storytelling than traditional DreamWorks films. They were trying to treat this, you know, story arc a little bit more seriously than they do with most DreamWorks films. Like we've seen with, like, other films, like Prince of Egypt, in which, you know, it, it can be watched by kids, but then adults can be able to com- comprehend it too, because it, it doesn't treat the kids like they're idiots or they need to be entertained for like 90 minutes by just jiggling all over with keys in front of their faces. It's like, it doesn't overwhelm you with bright so colors. To, to be fair, like, this isn't a key jingle your keys in front of your kid's movie. Like, uh, you No, know, it's, it's not. Like, I mean, like a lot of, you know, like various other films in which it's like, it's trying to be funny or, oh, look at all these bright colors like with trolls band together that almost made us sick. Yeah. But it was trying to be something really great with its storytelling. And yeah, I mean, I can understand like the non-linear story structure, but... 
but you know if it would have been pulled off very well I think it would have been a really interesting idea of how it would have been done I love Dark and I love his companions I love the way that the world works I like the way that they're able to explain about how they're able to do things I like the argument about why Dark and why Nighttime is important but unfortunately, the main character sucks. I don't like him. I think he's too much of a coward for me to say, oh yeah, I can really sympathize with you. There's a lot of things that he says that makes it look like he's trying to be smart when he doesn't even know what he's talking about. And then he tries to make it look like that Dark is the worst thing ever when he's actually the best part of this movie. And then when he goes away, it makes you feel like genuinely sad. And when you see the repercussions of what his actions did, it's like, yeah, there's a reason why I don't like you. Yeah. You know, when you got a character who gives you genie vibes, like, you know, that's a great thing to to capture in a movie, and uh, it's just, I just feel like you mean, Dark, you know, just needed to be the main character in this movie, and he just wasn't. Yeah, and then when, when you wonder about, like, why the other companions didn't want Orion to be there, and why, you know, they're, they're constantly saying... You sympathize with them. Yeah, you sympathize with them. It's like, yeah, I don't blame you for want, not wanting him to be here because he says things that he doesn't know what he's talking about. He tries to convince them to saying dark is bad or your jobs are irrelevant or, you know, light is so much better. It's like, yeah, I don't want to be around this character either. So, <sighs> but again, there are so many things that I actually do like about this movie. I love the animation. I like some of the characters. I like that they were trying to do something different with the storytelling, but there's just too many flaws that make it feel like it could have been done so much better. And you know the worst part of it is I'm pretty sure dream was probably looking at this right now but saying hey orion the tv series i was like oh my god well help I us i don't know maybe the tv series will be better um are you serious this character this character as you know you, you we spend what about an hour and 48 minutes with this character and now you're saying we want a whole 20 episodes of this i didn't say about him i just said maybe dark and his companions can have yeah their own TV. dark is a tv series yeah well, there you well, go. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll tolerate that but yeah orion no no, no. Okay, you know what? I'm you know, it's funny, like, I mean, he's probably, dare I say, maybe out of all the DreamWorks movies, and this might be saying something, I think, for all, I mean, he's, is he, he's not worse than Oscar from uh, Shark Tale. I no, he's I'll not, and he's not worse than the Boss Baby. And he's, he's not worse than the Boss Baby, And no. he's not worse than freaking Poppy from the Trolls movies. I guess not, and uh, so, I mean, like, there have been, like, other worst protagonist characters, I think you can say, in DreamWorks movies. Unfortunately, Orion isn't the worst one, but it uh, would be very hard to say he's not one of them, so. Yeah. Anyway. This could have been so much better. It should have been so much better. Yeah. Anyway, but we got two more films to watch for uh, Dream Machine this mu this year, and uh, next month is going to be Kung Fu Panda 4. We saw the trailer. We're really excited about it. We're excited about seeing Jack Black coming back as the Dragon Warrior. We're seeing the... I've seen a couple of spoilerish kind of things, but uh, I'm going to basically not say anything further, but I will just say that we are looking forward to Kung Fu Panda 4. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this new villain, and I'm really looking forward to all the new characters that are going to be brought into it, so you know what... I mean, even though that this was a rough point for DreamWorks, I mean, especially 2023, that, that year sucked for DreamWorks, but I'm just hoping 2024 will be a little bit better. It's interesting because, I mean, if we answer to speak a little bit about Kung Fu Panda 4, apparently, because, you know, we've been told that, you know, now, um, you know, Poe has to search for a successor, so, like, uh, it's going to give a lot of intrigue who's going to be the next Dragon Warrior. Yeah, let's just hope that this is a better attempt of finding a successor than Cars 3. I get a feeling this is going to be a Creed situation. I really do. Like, you know, they're going to, like, find this guy, and then all of a sudden he's going to get his own series of movies. Yeah. I, I don't know, like, uh, it's interesting. I get the feeling that's what we're going for. Yeah, but we'll have to wait next month for that. Cool. Until then, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to Dream Machine. Let us know in the comments below about your thoughts of Orion in the Dark. Did you agree with our sentiment? Or maybe you actually really did enjoy this movie. And if you can tell us, you know, nicely, but in a concise way on why, then please let us know. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, don't forget to turn off the light before you go to sleep. Good night, everyone. Good night.